That's fine, okay. Stay in, in your will, Lord. We need to stay in the will of God. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Greetings. Welcome to our teleconference another Sunday. We are just giving glory to God and giving thanks to Him for all He has done for us. Truly the Lord is to be praised from the uprising of the sun to the going down of the same. He's a wonderful God. He's a great God. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. He's a God of mercy and a God of grace. So we thank God that, you know, and that only that we know He loves us. He loves us with an undying love, with this agape love, this love that it cannot be measured, cannot be comprehended. But it's a great love that God has for us. So thank God for His love towards us, His mercy, His grace, and all that He has done for us. We're going to go into a teleconference to so continue from last week. And um, before I do, just a short prayer. Father, I thank you. Father, I praise you 
Father, I bless you. I worship and glorify you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for everyone who's joining this teleconference. Lord, I pray you will be with us. I pray you'll guide us. I pray you'll give us inspiration to your word. And we will give you the glory and the honor that is due unto your name. Ask us blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are going to go right back, right into the Word, continuous, continuing from last week. And our topic is, Be not deceived. Be not deceived because deception leads to destruction. It's very important that we, try, that we do everything in our power not to let any man deceive us. Not to let anyone deceive us because deception lead to destruction. Last week we were talk, talking about, you know, what happened um, in the Garden of Eden and we, how um, Eve was deceived by the serpent. And, you know, going on, we were talking also about kings in, in, the, in the book of Kings where um, this prophet was deceived. He was ordered by God to go to Bethel and not to return, not to return the same way that he went. And um, he obeyed to an extent, and he was told not to eat or drink from anyone until he returned to where he started. And he went, obeyed the Lord to a certain extent, but at one extent, he didn't go back the way that he came. He went by another way. But then there was this prophet who deceived him. Deceived him. And told him that the Lord, an angel spoke to him. And tell him to come back to his house. So in doing that, he went back to that prophet's house. And eat and drink with him. And he brought on himself destruction. So... And there's been many instances in the Bible where man has been deceived one way or another. But we have to guard ourselves from deception. Guard ourselves very carefully from deception. I'm going to read this um, in the New Testament, the writings of the Apostle Paul to the Galatians. Paul wrote many of the book in the New Testament, as we know, most of the writing, we, most of the writing was the writings of Paul. And we know how Paul got saved, how he persecuted the church. He persecuted God's people. And in the due course of time, God knew him and God wanted to save him. And um, on his way down to Damascus to catch the people of God to put them in prison um, God met him on the way he, f he was on his horse and he fell off his horse and then he became blind and then he heard a voice that says Saul why persecutest thou me and and Saul said to his name was Saul then but he was later called Paul he said, I am Jesus who thou persecutest. So we know that Paul had a personal encounter with God. He had a personal encounter with God. God called him in a splendid way, in a most dramatic way, in that he knocked him off his horse and blind him. Sometimes people don't get saved unless something drastic happened to them. But then he realized that he was not that powerful Paul Saul that he thought he was, that he could do what he wants, that he could find the Christians and lock them up and, you know, persecute the Christians and just feel that he can do that, you know, and, and it's fine. But God showed him another way. God wanted to show him another way. And God bless you. And so he was converted. He was converted on the road to Damascus. 
And I want to read what Paul says in Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Now we're talking about deception. We're talking about deception and how people can be easily deceived. So Galatians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 1 down to verse 20, says, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren that are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, whom gave himself for our sins, that we might be delivered, that he might deliver us from the present evil world, according to the will of God our Father, to be glory. To whom be glory forever and ever. I marvel that ye are soon gone, soon removed from him that called you unto grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we preach unto you, let him be accursed. And we said before, and say now again, if any man preach another gospel unto you than that which he have received, let him be accursed. For I, for do I now preach unto men, O God, or do I seek to please men? For if I please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Verse 11. But a certain, but Certain you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not of men. Let me read that, verse 11 again. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which I preach, that was preached of me, is not of men. For neither receive it of men, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 13, For ye have heard of my conversation in the past, in, in the past, in the Jews, religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews, religion above my equal in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son unto me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I confer not with the flesh. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them that were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned unto Damascus. Then after these three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with, with him fifty days. Of other apostles I saw none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. So Paul is writing to the Galatians, Galatians explaining himself how he, be, become, how he became saved. He says, I, Paul, apostle, 
not of men. He was not called of men. He was not taught of men. But God Almighty, God Almighty called him in due course, even though he persecuted the church. And he was holding the garments of them that stoned Stephen. So he was accomplished, accomplice to the death of Stephen, the first martyr. But he's explained himself, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither of man by man, but by Christ Jesus and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren with me unto the churches of Galatia. Galatia. Grace be unto you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that we might be delivered from the present evil world. Amen. God bless you, my sister. According to the will of my Father. So Paul is explaining how he was called, why he was called, how he got saved, and explain everything. And he said unto that, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He says, I marvel that he soon not be, uh, he said now, Paul is saying, writing to the Galatians, says, I marvel that he has so soon removed from him that call you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So he's, he's saying to the Galatians that he has revealed Jesus to them. But he says, I marvel that you are soon removed from... So, so basically, it means that there is a set gospel. There is a set uh, doctrine that we must adhere to. M many, are, many gospels, many are called out there. Many are there saying, I am Christ. I am, I am the Lord. The Lord sent me and they are messengers of the Lord. But... If they, not, they do not preach the gospel the way it is given from Jesus to the apostle, they are not preaching the gospel. So he said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you from grace of, of Christ unto another gospel. So there is not another gospel that is true. There is one gospel, the gospel of the birth, the death, and the burial and the, and the resurrection of Jesus. That's the only gospel. That's what we preach. That God Himself came to earth, dwelt among men, taught them three and a half years. He was crucified and He was buried and He was in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights and was resurrected and ascended to heaven. That is the gospel. The gospel is also about repentance, that we should preach. All men must repent and be born again. Be born of the water, be born of the Spirit. Be born again. Every man must be born again. This is the gospel that Jesus gave to his disciples. And this is what Paul is talking about, the gospel. There's no other. But, our, but the, the Galatians must have been wandering away from what they were taught. And so Paul said, I marvel that you're so soon removed. You are not grounded. You are shifting away from the gospel. The gospel which is called unto you, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he went on to say, which is not another. There's not another gospel. There is not another doctrine that can save us, but, the, but the, by the blood of Jesus. 
which is not another. But there are some that trouble you and pervert, prevent, pervert you from the gospel. That means that they were being deceived. Someone came along and said they knew something that Paul didn't spoke about, that the disciples didn't teach about, that Jesus never talked about, and the, the Galatians were following them. And so he said, I marveled. So being deceived by others, by men. But he went on to say in verse 8, For though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached, let him be accursed. Anyone preach another gospel except for the gospel of repentance, baptism, and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost is not preaching the gospel. That is the gospel. That was what Paul, that was what Peter spoke, spoke, preached about on the day of Pentecost. When the power came down and they tarried and the power came down and they said, when they saw they were gathered together at Pentecost where people from different nations all over the world came together for Pentecost in Jerusalem. And when the Holy Ghost came as it was promised by Jesus and they began to speak in other tongues and they were troubled. They said, what are these men drunk? And he said, no, these are not. Peter said, we are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel that in the last days I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. This was a fulfillment of prophecy. So when the men saw the the, the work of God and the power of the Holy Ghost, they cried unto the disciples and said, Men and brethren, what do we do? And Peter said, Repent and be baptized every one of you and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost Peter went on to say this promises unto you your children and your children children as many as are far off that the Lord thy God shall call this is the way and this is the gospel this is why Jesus commissioned his disciples going into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus. It's Jesus' name. So he said, But we, he repeated again, as I said to you before, he reiterated, as I said before, and I say again, if any man preach another gospel than that which he have received, let him be accursed. Even if it's an angel from heaven, come and tell us that there's another gospel. The word says, let him be accursed. Because there's one gospel, there's one doctrine. In this world, there's so many denominations, there's so many religions. But if they do not preach Jesus as Lord, they are not preaching the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus is Lord. And the word says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. When we know that Jesus is Lord, that's fine. We, are, we know the gospel. We understand the gospel. Because only through God inspiration to us, we can know this gospel. And he went on to say, he went on to say, For I, for do I persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men or to please God? If I please men, I should not be the servant of God. So to many, the gospel is not pleasing. Man don't, man don't like to hear the word repentance. They don't like to hear the word repentance. 
But repentance is a thing that has to be preached because no one, no man can be saved outside of repentance. Repentance is when we realize that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And when we realize that, then we turn to God and say, Lord, I repent. Lord, wash me. Lord, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. That is repentance. Many have been called to repentance and has not repented. And God has left them. Repentance is essential from the beginning, from Adam's up to now. Repentance is an essential part of our salvation. And that's what we preach. I certify you, brethren, the gospel which was preached of me is not of man. He, he declared, it's clear. He, 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 was, he, ne, he did not go to any school or college to learn what God gave him. It was the Spirit of God who put it in his heart to, re, to write these letters. It was the Spirit of God who inspired him to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. So many things happened to Paul. He was put in prison, he was beaten, and everything. Later on, he was beheaded in Rome. But he, did, he was steadfast. And so we have to be steadfast, knowing the gospel that we preach, knowing the gospel that we, we, we live for, is based on the death, birth, the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus. He said the gospel that he preached was not given to him by man, but by God himself. The gospel of repentance was given to us by God himself. He said, for neither receive of man, neither thought, thought of man, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. How oh, that beyond measure I persecuted the church and wasted it. He's confessing how he persecuted the church. How he took Christians and locked, put them in prison. And all he did against, against the truth until God converted him. And what a conversion. And he went out preaching the gospel, preaching the word of God. And it says in verse 15, If I please God, who separate me from my mother's womb, and call me by his grace, to reveal his son in me, that I may preach, among, preach him among the heathen, immediately I concurred, conferred with the flesh and the blood. I confer not with the flesh and blood. So he's saying when he received the gospel, he did not seek wisdom from man because he knew God gave him the authority to preach the gospel. And he said he went to Jeru up to Jerusalem. He didn't go to Jerusalem to the prophets there. He went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. And after three years I went to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. So when God gives us something, we know it comes from God. We just go on the word of God. We stand on the word of God. We do not be distracted. We cannot be distracted. We have to follow the word of God. So God save him in a miraculous way. And he's saying that there is no other gospel. So we should not be deceived. And in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus spoke about deception. Um, Matthew chapter 24, it says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. 
And Jesus said, See ye not these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and the end of the world? And Jesus said unto them, Jesus said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. That's a warning that Jesus gave to his disciples when he sat there upon the Mount of Olives and when his disciples came to him privately and tell us, tell us when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of the coming? And he began to explain and the end of the world. And he began to explain to them. But the first thing Jesus said to his disciples, Take heed that no man deceive you. We have to be so careful in these times that we are not deceived because deception leads to destruction. We have to keep our feet solid, standing on the promises of of God. We have to trust in Him. We have to lean on Him. There's no other way but God's way. Many men may say, oh, I, this is the way, this is the way, that's the way. No. There's just one way. That's God's way. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. There we go again, deception. Many shall come in my name. So many shall come in Jesus' name saying that I am Christ, saying that they are Christ and shall deceive many. So it shows us that many shall be deceived. Many shall be deceived. But we should not be deceived. Because we know Jesus. We know who God is. So he went on to say, telling them about the signs of the times. In verse 6, Matthew chapter 24. And he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Are we hearing that now? Are we hearing wars about wars and rumors of war? Are we hearing that now? Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus said that this would be, we are in the time. That shows us that we are in the end time. He says to them, See that ye be not troubled. In other words, don't worry. You hear these things, all these countries gearing up to fight. He says, see that you're not... What a comfort, what a comfort. See that you're not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So when we hear of these things, don't let it, don't let it spoil your day. Because Jesus said these things must come to pass. Not if, um, but, but they must. They must come to pass. Because Jesus says it will come to pass. Wars and rumors of wars. Be not troubled. And he says, Nation shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. Nation shall rise up against nation, kingdoms against kingdoms, and famine and pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. I think we've seen a lot of that at the moment. So we are know that we are in the last days. So he went on to say, 
All these things, all these are the beginning of sorrows. So we, if we think it's bad now, if we look by, if we look on the word of God, it says that these things is the beginning of sorrows. So that is to tell us that we think it's not going to get better. Only in Jesus we have hope. Only in Jesus we have assurance. And it's good to know that we have that assurance. It says, be not worried. Be not troubled. Don't let it trouble you. Why he said don't let it be troubled? Because she's in charge. The devil might be the prince of this world, but Jesus is above him. And is greater. And more powerful. He created all things. He's in all things. He knows all things. There's nothing hid from him. Because he's God. He said, then he shall deliver it to be afflicted and be killed. And he shall be hated of nation for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. That is a sign of the last days of the coming of the Lord. Many shall be afflicted. Then shall many be offended. You know some people sometimes become offended when they talk about, when you tell them about Jesus, they become offended. They don't want to hear. You don't tell them about salvation, they don't want to hear. Tell them about repentance, they don't want to hear. Tell them about baptism, they don't want to hear. Tell them they should seek the Lord, they don't want to hear. So many shall be afflicted. Many shall be offended. He shall deliver you up to be afflicted. And it went on to say in verse 11, Many false prophets shall rise. And here we go with deception again. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. We are living in a time of this great deception. Great deception. Deception is all around us. The only way we can know is by standing on the word of God. The only way we can avoid being deceived is to trust in Jesus. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to depend upon his word. Just to trust in him. How sweet to trust Jesus. We don't need to trust, we trust man. We must trust the Lord. Because many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And he went on to say, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many, the love of many shall wax cold. Because iniquity, iniquity shall abound. You know, if we think about the beginning, how it started, everything started by Eve being deceived by the serpent and Adam disobeying God and it went on how Cain killed Abel and going on how you know the children of Israel was taken captive in Egypt and how they were slaves in Egypt and was treated in a brutal way by the taskmaster and how God delivered them and how things went on and how God saved them and took them out of bondage, bring them through the Red, through the Red Sea at and, and in, a, in a great and mighty way and we see how they were delivered and even though God did so much for them they grieve God, they moan, they complain about this they could not, one time they could not find, get bread God had to send manna from heaven to feed them they get, they get water, they get bread and all the years they wandered in the wilderness and they moan and they groan, they made idol how is it that God do so much and we, he gets so little from us? How comes God bless us every day when we wake up? 
It's God that wake us up. And He gets so much, so little from us. And He gives so much. He gives us a roof over our head. He gives us food on our table. He put clothes on our back. And He gets so little. David said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt His name together. When we realize how God is good, we want to magnify Him. We want to glorify Him. We want to sing and shout hallelujah. Because He's good. He's faithful. He's just. He will always remain faithful to us. His love and His mercy is all around us. All He asks us to do is to serve Him. Obey his voice. It's not so hard. It's not so difficult. He will guide us. He will protect us. He will be our fortress. The word says, the Lord is my fortress. You know when you have a fortress, nothing can penetrate it. He's my shield. He's my buckler. He's my strong arm. He's my rock. When we have Jesus, we don't need anything else. We have Jesus, we have all. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. So let us keep our eyes on Jesus. Let us serve him from the heart. Let us give him the praise, give him the glory. Let us not be deceived by any man. Let us not look to man. Because the arm of flesh, the, 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 the Bible says the arm of flesh will fail us. We, we dare not even trust our own. That's how bad it is. But we can trust Jesus. We can lean on Jesus. Songwriter says leaning, leaning, leaning on Jesus. Safe and secure from all alarm. In these in these last days, these closing days of time, we need to cling to Jesus even more. We do not know what is around the corner, but we do know this earth is collapsing. Every corner of it is collapsing. Man has failed. They have destroyed the creation of God. You can't find peace anywhere. You can't find righteousness. It's so hard to find. You can't find these things. You can't find love. And love is the key. Because God is love. This world has gone stray away, strayed away from God. They're strayed away from God. If we only serve God, if we only love God, if we only worship God, if we just give him the praise and honor that due unto his name, we say, Abba, Father. But if we say, Abba, Father, then we should serve him as a father. We should love him as father. We should honor him as a father. He is Lord of all. Be not deceived. Let no man take heed. Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. How do we know that when we've been deceived? We know by the, the word of God. If anyone tell us something, that God tell them something to tell you or me, let us look into the word of God because the word of God covers everything. The word of God covers every situation we ever find ourselves in. There's no, in, there's no situation we find ourselves in which someone before has not found some patriots or prophet or saint of God has not found himself in. There's no situation. But God deliver them out of every condition. God is faithful. He's a faithful God. And so as we look at these words when Jesus says take heed that no man deceive you. There's no God. 
but the one revealed in Jesus Christ. He came to earth, he dwelt among men, he taught them, he gave the beatitude, he felt the multitude, he opened the eyes of the blind, and he did so many miracles to show who he is. So we don't have to be doubtful who Jesus is. Jesus, God is not a mystery. He is not a mystery. We can know God as our personal Savior, as our personal friend. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about my troubles. He will guide to the days come. There's not a friend like a lowly Jesus. Can you imagine? Think about the honor that God has given us. That we can say, God is my friend. He's my savior. He's my king. But he's my friend. Think of the honor that God has given to us. And let us glorify him. We just need to glorify him and praise his wonderful name. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. He is altogether lovely. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And we all, we also love the Lord because he's good. He's wonderful. David said, I was young and now I am old. Imagine the testimony of David. I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. How good is that? How great is that? What a God. David says from his youth all the way to his hoary head, his gray hair, he's never seen one righteous man forsaken nor his seed begging bread. What a God! What a God He can provide! He can deliver! He can heal! There's nothing impossible for God to do! Oh, there is two things. He is, it's impossible for Him to lie. And it is impossible for God to fail. Just two things God can't do. Anything else, God can do. Anything else, God can do. If the sea and the billows are tossing around you, hallelujah, call upon Jesus. If you are cast, if you are to be cast into the fire, the fiery furnace, lean upon Jesus. If you are to be pushed into the lion's den, Hallelujah. Lean upon Jesus. He cannot fail you. He will never fail you. You may be at the top of the cliff. You may be at the edge of the cliff. He will not fail you. He's an on-time God. He's never late. Lazarus was dead, but he knew that Lazarus was going to die. But how would he prove that he could raise someone who's dead for three days? How could he prove unless he, unless he allowed it to happen? He had to allow Lazarus to be dead for three days. And then he could show that he can raise the dead. Because you know he is a life. He is life. Where God is, is life. He is life. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. God is life. If we have God, we cannot die. If we have God, we cannot die. The songwriter says, Death has no victory over the blood-bought one. Oh, glory, hallelujah to the Lamb. 
death has no victory over a child of God. Because when Jesus died, he went down to hell and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Jesus has got the keys. He's got the keys. Our Lord has got the keys. Satan has no power over us. Bless his holy name. My brother, I'm going to stop there. God bless you. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to ask um, uh, Pastor Winston, um, Xavier, Sister Clara. Um, praise the Lord. Sister McLean, God bless you, Sister McLean. Joining us. Sister McLean is there joining us. How are you, Sister McLean? God bless you. God bless you too, Brother Thompson. Um, could you give us a little thought before uh, before um, we close? Yes, Brother Thompson. You, can you give us a little thought because it's been a while we haven't see, heard of you. How are you keeping? Oh, thank God. Uh, oh. I'm not too bad by the grace of God. Oh, praise God. Here. In spite of everything, you know, um, I'm keeping. Oh. I'm keeping the faith. Thank you. You know God. because I know that the Lord is with me, and I know that you know I'm fighting a very serious battle. I can't even say, you know, because there are some things that you really just can't, just can't repeat. You're yes, just have yes, to yes, just, yes. Just turn it over to the Lord and yes. just leave and let Him work on it. You know. Because it's not easy, but no. by the grace of God, I am determined Amen. to hold on to the end because I know there is power in the name of yes. Jesus. Yes, amen. And I know that there is victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. And there is deliverance in the name of Jesus. You know, and I'm just waiting on the Lord because I know He will fix it for me. And as He was speaking now, just when I was coming from church today, and I was just thinking, you know, and certain situation that I'm facing, you know, barriers and stubborn, you know, sometimes you've been praying over one thing for years, yes, and the yes. more you pray, the yes. more things, be, you know, sometimes it feel as if um, it, is, it is shifting, and then on the other side again, you, it come back stronger, yes, yes. but you know, I won't give up, you know, because Jesus promised Yes. Never to leave me alone. And as you said, he cannot lie. No. He no, cannot he lie. He lie. He never lies. He's lie. a faithful God. Yes. And he's so faithful to fail us. And he's so faithful to disappoint us. Yes. All we have to do is just keep on praying, keep on trusting, keep on believing, yes. Yes. keep on waiting. Yes. You know, because he will come through. You know? And as you said, he. Jesus went to hell and he took the keys from Satan. Yes. He disarmed him. Yes. You know, he is dis disarmed. But he still fight, but he's fighting a losing yes, battle. Yes, he is. For Jesus is the winner man mm. all the time. And he's fighting our battles. You know, there are times, you know, that, um, I remember um, about two weeks ago I was praying. And you know what the devil said to me? Um, you don't see that God not answering your prayer. <laughs> and I said, devil, get lost. Amen. Get lost. Because I know that God is yes, answering yes, my prayer. Yes. You know, but the devil, the, the, you know, the devil has to do his work. Yes, yes. And we are yes. to know when he's around. Yes. Because it's just negativity. Yes. But if we believe in the true and living God, you know, he will fight our battles. Because all power belonging to him. And as I said before, there is power and there is deliverance in the name of Jesus. And although my back is against the wall, I know that he's holding my hand. And as I said, I was coming from church and you know, I was talking and I was meditating. And this um, chapter came to me, um, Joshua 1 and verse 9. I will just read it. Mm -hmm. Joshua 1 and verse 9. Yeah. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and yes. have a good courage. Yes, yes, yes. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. That's right. For the Lord thy God 
is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Amen. And this was when Joshua took over, over from Moses. Moses. Yes, yes, I remember The that. Lord was with him. Yes, so he, he was. was with Moses. So he is with Joshua. Yes. And I know he is with me. Amen. Praise God. Because he is answering my prayer. It might look as if there, there is no way That's out, right. but God That's is right. making a way. He's making and a you way. know, this in the, in the redemption 413, he said, When peace like a river attended, attended my, my ways, when sorrows Amen. like sea gills rule. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know, it is well. It is well. You know, and I'm just asking the Lord to give me a discerning spirit mm -hmm. that I can discern between good and evil. And I can know when the devil is uh, around. You know, because, you know, when he's around, yes. everything is upside down. Yes, yes. And, uh, yes. I'm telling you, I came from church and I tell it, hell get loose in the house. Oh, my Lord. And I have to plead the blood. I have to plead mm -hmm. the blood. And then the morning, my plead the blood is the more the dead, the fierce. And I plead the blood and I plead the blood. You know, because only that. Because Satan trembles when he hears the blood of yes, Jesus. Yes, yes, he does. For the blood of Jesus is powerful. Yes. And I just, I just want to remain under the blood of Jesus. I just want to be covered and covering my family mm -hmm. because I know that very soon I'm going to win the victory. God bless you, Brother Thompson. Amen. Thank you for this uh, um, few minutes that you gave to me. You know, it's been quite be a long time. I haven't been on this platform, yes. but many Sundays my heart my body is absent, but my heart is always Amen. present, you know. Praise and I'm God. so glad tonight I could join in, you know, make a fresh commitment. So God bless you and thank you very much. Amen. And you are doing a good work. You keep it up as Nehemiah. God is your reward. You know, may the grace of Almighty God cover you and be with you and your family. Be strong, my brother in the Lord. God is with you. The God of Jacob Amen. is your strength. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Mark. I mean, I know Sister Mark very well, and I know that the devil give her a hard time. When I said a hard time, a hard time. Kick, thump, box, everything. Oh, one time after the other, but she's a warrior. I have to take off my hat to her. She's a warrior. She don't give up. She don't give in to the devil. And we know that God, I know that God is going to bring her out like a diamond like gold you know because you know the bible says we, we go through this fire but god will bring us out like a shiny gold She's gonna, you're gonna come out my sister like shiny gold just keep holding on trusting in jesus because the devil is a liar he's a liar and he's the father of the lie he created the lie the first lie ever told the first lie ever told was told by the devil himself, the serpent in the garden. Mm -hmm. And he's a liar and from the beginning until Jesus will come and chain him and put him into a bottomless, bottomless pit. That's where he's going. So keep yeah. holding on because God will not fail you. God will not fail you. Pastor Winston, God bless you, sir. I was with you today. And we had a lovely time at your church. Yes, sir. It was a lovely service. I really enjoyed it. I was with Pastor Winston today. It was like we really had a party. It was a party, Pastor Winston. We had a party. <laughs> you want to say a few words for us, Pastor Winston? God bless you too, sir. It was nice having you today. Wonderful work. Yes. Mm. And I know God was with you. Amen. I enjoy it so much. Amen. And if you like to sing this song, then sing my song. My song. My song. My song. My song. My song. How great thou art, how great thou art, 
Then sings my soul, my faith, dear God, to Thee, I'll wait, I'll wait. Oh, great! Praise God! Praise God! Praise. Hallelujah! Oh, great to the Lord! Amen. Because the loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise Thee. Thus will I bless Thee. My lips shall praise Thee. Yes. Praise God, 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 Amen. I keep me fresh and young. I love the Lord and my mind make up the service. I'll never stop praising Him. I'll never stop blessing Him. Amen. Because kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise Him. My lips, I want to call the ones who shall praise Him. That's why you have this today. To praise God, worship God. God, why should they not worship Him? Must worship Him in spirit and in spirit. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, we did. <laughs> and by my church. Amen. And I love my people. And I love to praise God. And bless the Lord in Him. God did it. God did good work, Mr. Thompson. And God bless you and your family. And keep it. And you may, you may, you may die, die. You may live. Amen. And just declare the word of the Lord. You may live to preach. Live to teach. Live to encourage. Amen. And to receive a blessing from the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. I know, I know. That's your that's my few words. I'm telling you, I'm a phone almost die. That's my few words in the fighting. Amen. Amen. God Wonderful bless you, Pastor. We say God bless you. Mother we, ma, is there mother, mother, mother Mills? Is that you there? Sister Clara. God bless you. I think it's Mother Mills joining us. God bless you. But brethren, God bless you all for joining us tonight on God the teleconference. You, God is good. He is to be praised from the uprising of the sun to the going down. Let us keep trusting in Him. All we need to do is trust God. That's Hallelujah. all. All we need to do is trust oh, Him in all circumstances, in all situations. We just need to trust Him. That's, what, that's all He asks us to do. Trust Him. Mm -hmm. That's all. If we trust him, then we'll obey him, we'll serve him, and we will not have, a, we, we, not that we won't have problems in life because we're no system are clean, what the devil is doing. But I pray for you all the time, my dear sister, and I know God, I know, is, God is going to deliver you. God is God's going to deliver you in a mighty way. The hotter the battle, the sweeter the victory. God bless you. God be the glory. Amen. God bless you, my brethren. Have a wonderful week. And may the Lord grace us. Sister Rose, God bless you. Still there, Sister Rose? Yes, I'm always there. Oh, Anything can you? Do, uh, oh, I like to God bless you also. Nice to hear all the beautiful voices of the saints on there. Pastor Winston, I heard your beautiful voice. Sister McLean, your beautiful voice. And yes. all the other names I see on there as well. Yes. So nice. I think so my nice. voice is on there too. Your voice as well. Oh, God bless you, my darling. God bless you, my dear. God bless you. Will I sing a, sing a song for us, Sister Rose, and close us with a song, a chorus or whatever? We always okay. ask Sister Rose to sing. I love you, Lord. Mm. Yes, Lord. I, I lift my heart to worship you. Worship you. 
my soul rejoice take joy my king heal what you have let it be a sweet sweet sound in your hands i love you lord i love you lord and I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you have, let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your hands, I exalt you, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, oh Lord, we exalt thee, we exalt thee. We exalt thee, oh Lord, I love you, Lord, love you, Lord, and I my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice. It's joy, my King, joy, my King, in what you have. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your hands. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your hands. Let it be, let it be a sweet, sweet Amen. God bless you all. Amen. May God bless you. Thank you, Sister Rose. I love the Lord and I lift my voice to worship with you, oh my Lord. Hallelujah. My soul rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your, hallelujah. In your ear. The Bible says, when the saints pray, the prayer of the saints go up to God as a sweet smelling savor. Oh, praise the Lord. Saints, let's keep praying. Let's keep looking to God because He's, not, he's, a, he's, a, he's there for us. He will not fail us. Going to close in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you for everyone that has joined this teleconference. Lord, I pray your hand will be upon us all. I pray your presence will be with us. I pray you will stand by us, Lord Jesus. I pray you will bind the plans of the enemy. I cast down the devil right now on every plan he has for your children. Lord, I send it back to him right now in the name of Jesus. Bless your people, Lord. Cover your children under your blood. Open ways and avenues. Open doors for your people, Lord. Hallelujah. Let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. Let there be provision for all your children, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Be with us, Lord. Guide us and protect us. As we ask these blessings in Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you, brethren. God bless Thank you, you for joining us. God bless you too. Have a great week and a prosperous week. <laughs> Love have, you all. God bless you. Have a great week. God bless you all. Take care, everyone. Thank bye you, my God. God bless. Bye. 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 bye.